welcome. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. So, you know, just to kickstart the conversation, we're here at IEW24. Uh, what's been your experience so far? How has been the interactions that you've uh, had and uh, any specific objectives that you have in mind at the event? Uh, look, any conference of this scale uh, normally provides an opportunity for all the companies in oil and gas space to come together. I being from gas sector, this becomes an opportunity to talk to various gas companies, understand what they are doing, uh, and also kind of collaborate, kind of, right? This becomes a more space for collaboration and trying to understand something new happening, and you learn from them. So I think that's what the main objective we come here. Uh, yes, once you pick up a uh, queue from here, then you take your discussions further, uh, outside the conference and then kind of uh, make it happen kind of yeah. so so again uh, these are the main things which we do kind of, yeah. okay yeah, absolutely um so could you share with us from your vantage point what are some of the macro trends that you are seeing in the gas industry specifically and how do these really fit in with india's vision in the energy transition we are going through so first thing is i think the vision of government of india to take gas uh, percentage of gas in the energy mix from say 6% now to 15 Now, one new thing has happened now. So the government is saying gas means gas coming from various forms of energy. Say uh, waste to gas uh, projects, you have uh, coal gasification and multiple such uh, opportunities, including hydrogen. I was saying maybe hydrogen is also a gas kind of thing. So that's one difference which has come in the way we think about gas. Uh, However, if you see from upstream to downstream, new production is coming from KG6 uh, uh, fields, so that's great for India. Uh, we have new terminals being commissioned, so more import of gas will happen. And also uh, CGD space, huge number of CGDs being developed. So uh, I'm very confident that maybe in the next five, 10 years, uh, India's uh, gas usage will definitely double and uh, the percentage will, if not 15%, will go to a double digit figure. Fantastic. So what are some of the initiatives at uh, PIL that you're really investing in? Uh, again, when it comes to really helping India take the steps forward, like you say, to double it or triple it in the coming years. So our is a huge pipeline, one of the largest in India. Uh, we're doing multiple things. One is making our operation as efficient as possible. We are adopting all new technologies as far as pipeline industry is concerned. But in generic space, I'll say we are using now ML and AI, which is the next thing to happen, using our data and using artificial intelligence to project and predict our business, our uh, kind of how the pipeline operates. So that will take us another one, two years, but that will make us more efficient and also uh, low cost operator. Other thing which we are doing is to increase our volumes in the pipeline. We are planning to blend hydrogen in the natural gas pipeline. There's a lot of talk on hydrogen and hydrogen blending across the world. We're doing a lot of research in the world. We are partnering with uh, companies across the world to see how we can blend it. However, this is something like three to four years away, but uh, we are working uh, on R&D currently in this space to make it happen. So these are the two big things we are doing. Currently. And you mentioned as well, you have uh, new technologies and innovations yeah. in your pipeline infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything, uh, again, India specific that you're really looking at? Uh, not really from the pipeline technology point of view, but we always keep uh, abreast of the new technological innovations to make ourselves efficient. For example, we have uh, gas turbines and compressors which are uh, driven by gas today. Now we can electrify that uh, fleet to decarbonize our business. So one is uh, bringing new technology, but also ensure this technology helps us decarbonize and decrease our carbon footprint. Here. And when it comes to the space of investments and uh, really investor opportunities here in India, what are some of the trends that you are seeing, some of the biggest opportunities that uh, you could share that you've identified? Uh, so if you see the kind of money India has to spend on infra, and particularly for gas infra is huge. Uh, there's something to the tune of 40, 50 billion dollars. Now, there are a lot of PSU companies in this space. They'll keep spending that money. Then there is a private companies which are coming in. Uh, if we balance the risk reward in this space, there's a lot of billions of dollars sitting on the sidelines in India to come into India and they will invest to not only uh, do some greenfield, 
but also uh, get into brownfield and operate these assets uh, more uh, efficiently than what is being done today. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, exciting times and yeah. lots of opportunities ahead. What do you would what would you say is a realistic uh, roadmap ahead when it comes to India really seeing through the um, energy transition that we are aiming for? Now, if you see energy transition is a little hyped word. Yes. Uh, it will take decades to reach there. What is also important to know is oil and gas and even coal to some extent will remain. What it will happen is these will act as a bridging fuel for renewable energy to take its space and the percentage of renewable energy will increase while people like us who are in fossil fuels will try to decarbonize our footprint and also kind of decrease our carbon footprint so that both can coexist kind of, right? And we are more cleaner than what we are uh, and this gets space to the renewable energy. So transition will be slow. We have seen huge investments in solar, but uh, this will continue for next few decades before we can say that we have fully transitioned. Absolutely. And as for the recent budget announcements, is there any uh, standout announcements that you would say will again really uh, help in the sustainability targets? Uh, more than the budget, I'll say yes, uh, the government keeps uh, pushing infra projects, a lot of uh, support for renewables, also for hydrogen, they have announced. Uh, outside budget also, there's some tax reductions on uh, gas in Andhra, which is good for the gas sector. I think this will continue. It's a continuous process rather than just one budget. And we are hoping that the uh, government will keep pushing not only natural gas, but other sustainable uh, energy sources uh, uh, in years to come. Kind of. And finally, just uh, is there any key takeaway that you've had by being here at IEW24? It's, it's interesting place, as I said, <laughs> and exciting uh, to see all the oil and gas fraternity at one yes. uh, place. And that's what it makes it more exciting. Uh, my key takeaway would be that, look, uh, there's a lot of new friends in the energy sector. Yes. Learn from each other, collaborate, and then take it ahead. Yeah. Because uh, as a standalone company, you can just do that. Little. Absolutely, absolutely. Collaboration is always the way forward. All right. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure talking with you today. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Barbara.